Wasn't it that we did one of these messages? And we talked about uh, the history of religion. And uh, we started way back in eternity past. We talked about the creation of angels and the creation of spirits. And we also found out that one-third of the angels and one-third of the spirit world uh, rebelled against God, and they're still in rebellion against God today. And we have uh, guardian angels. Uh, the guardian angels come from what realm? you remember? Michael or Gabriel? Remember, here we have three groups of angels and spirits. We have Michael, we have Gabriel, and we have Lucifer, okay? And there's spirits in here. Spirits now are different than angels, aren't they? What is the difference between the spirit and the angel? You remember? Okay. Angels have form, and they, ha they are clothed with, uh, with the bodies of some sort that can pass between all the dimensions. I mean, there's ten dimensions, and angels can go between them. We only are in a three-dimensional world. Okay, and spirits are not clothed. They seek to dwell in what? Animal and flesh. Animal or human flesh. Okay. Now, there are spirits from the... the uh, Michael is the spiritual realm. Gabriel is the informational realm. And Lucifer is in the material realm. Okay? Matter. Now, if you have a guardian angel, basically, what realm are you living in? Well, it would be spiritual. In the material realm. Oh, we're, material. we're material. We're living in a material realm. Okay, now, if you needed insight or whatever else, it would come from the uh, uh, Gabriel's realm. That's where information is passed. Gabriel uh, appeared to... Uh, Mary, he appeared to Joseph, he appeared to people in the t Old Testament and New Testament. In the spiritual realm is Michael. Michael is the warrior angel. He's stronger than all the other angels, and he is specifically in the Bible called a what? An archangel. Archangel. Archangel means a head angel. We believe that there are three, or three realms with uh, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And Lucifer is also called what kind of an angel? What's, what c category? He's called a cherub. A cherubim, which are very powerful also. A cherubim, what's the difference between cherubim and other angels like seraphim? Okay, they have, they have wings. Okay, now the cherubs that stood over the Ark of the Covenant here, these cherubs are facing each other with the wings out like this. All right, and uh, cherubs have wings, and I guess they have arms too, kind of like what uh, Michelangelo and some of the great artists uh, kind of figured out there a little bit. All right, we come down. We have the we have mankind put on the earth. When God created Adam, He created him in His physical, His spiritual, and His sovereign likeness, didn't He? In Genesis 1:26. And man, in Genesis, the third chapter, was uh, tempted by Satan, but man did not fall by temptation, did he? The man did not fall by temptation. Who fell by temptation? Who was deceived? Eve. Eve was deceived. The man willingly partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, willingly. He wasn't deceived. And he and the great curse fell upon the man, not the woman. And then God said through the seed of the woman in Genesis 3.15 that he would bring a Messiah into the world. And not only would he bring a Messiah into the world, this Messiah would be him. This would be Jesus. Jesus, Jesus or Jehovah. Here's the name Jehovah right here. That's Jehovah in Hebrew. And then in, uh, in the Greek, they translated this word here to Kyrios, which means Lord. And we have the name Jesus also. And Jesus means what? What does Jesus mean? Mm -hmm. he, Jehovah saves. Oh, Jehovah Jesus means saves. Jehovah saves. Mm -hmm. Now, in John 1 and 1, it says, Maryland, John 1 and 1 in Greek. 
All right, Kaiho will go Sark again though. And it says there, and the the word or the word is a Hebraism, so it says here actually, it says, and the Jehovah fleshy became and dwelt among man, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John, 4, John 1 18 says, No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father, that one has led himself out. God led himself out of eternity in the space and time. Now, Jesus was the one that created the angels, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He's Jehovah. All right. Now, we have people called Jehovah Witnesses. Did you ever see them? Jehovah Witnesses? Oh, yeah. yeah, Jehovah Witnesses. Now, they say that Jesus is not Jehovah. But the Bible says Jesus is Jehovah. So actually, they're anti-Jehovah Witnesses. In all reality, and there's a, a whole shelf there of their works up there. Jehovah means he who shall become. This word here means he who shall become, and it comes from this Greek word right here. 212 and 214 in Brown Driver Briggs. That word there means he who shall become. Now, how do you say the name Jehovah? We say that word, and that's a misnomer completely, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's say the name Jehovah. Here is the word right here. Now, there is no vowels in that word. No vowels in it. No vowels. So let's say, here's a yod, hey, well, hey. How do you say that? Yeah, yeah, that's about it, yeah. We don't know how to say the name. The Jews didn't know how to say the name either. So they come up here and they would say, Ha, the bar, the word. So when John, of course John's a Hebrew, when he writes John 1 and 1, it says, N-R-K, ain't logos, kai logos, ain't pro so theo, kai logos, ain't theos. It says, in beginning kept on being the word, or the what? Jehovah. And Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because Jehovah kept on being God. And then it says in John 1, 14, the same chapter, it says, and the word Jehovah became flesh and dwelt among us. So this Jehovah, but how would we say his name? You can't say his name without vowels. It's not possible. Now I want you to look at the name Jesus also. This is a uh, now, you can say Jesus real easy, can't you? What are the vowels? A, E, I, O, and U, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now let's take the vowels out. Yeah. Now say that name. It's not possible, isn't it? <laughs> it's not possible to say the name. So we don't know how to say the name of God. And in John 1, uh, in, in Revelation, the 19th chapter, it says that, uh, that, that, well, let me read that to you just a little bit. That's, a, that's the last book in the, in the New Testament. And I had that upside down. Revelation, the 19th chapter, says, in verse number 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who uh, set upon is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war, and his eyes are like a flame of fire. And this is all figurative language, isn't it? It's, it's explaining this. And upon his head are many diadems. And he has a name written upon whom which no one knows except himself. That name, that's Jehovah. Okay? And he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called what? The Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven clothed in white linen and white clean. And uh, following him on white horses. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword. And this actually is a sharp, it means a double-bladed sword. A sword that cuts on both sides, both ways. That is, and he may smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads down the winepress of the wrath of God, fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. Now, he is also called Almighty God. What is that word in Hebrew? John is using... John writes the book of uh, Revelation in Greek, but he's using Hebrew words. What is the uh, name for Almighty God in Hebrew? Hebrew? Huh? El 
Bible should I? Hell should I? The all-nourishing one. The all-nourishing one. The almighty God. So here we have the name of Jesus, which is the almighty God. And uh, James, his half-brother, calls him the Lord of Armies. And now here it says, also he gives him another of Jehovah title. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name called uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Adonai Ha'adonaim in Hebrew. That's quoted right out of the Old Testament. This is the God that appeared to Abraham. Jesus in the, in the 8th and the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, the Jews came to him and he says, uh, what do you mean that you're older than Abraham? Abraham saw your day and was, was thrilled. Well, back in, in Genesis, the first book in the Bible, about a sheath, the book of Genesis, it says that Abraham, that Jehovah appeared unto Abraham, and he called the name Jehovah Jireh. The Lord here was seen. The Lord provided, and the Lord was seen. Therefore, he offered Isaac up as a sacrifice, and when he got ready to kill Isaac, the Lord says, hold your, don't touch him, because I know that you believe me. And, he, and then he said, look over there, there's a ram caught in the thicket. Go over there and get that ram you offer him. Because you were willing to offer your son. Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Now, <clears throat> Jehovah in the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will absolutely deny that. They deny that Jesus ever died on the cross and they deny that he ever was raised. The same thing with the Muslims. They deny that Jesus was ever, ever crucified and deny that he was ever, ever raised. <coughs> but the gospel of is, according to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, what is the gospel? Remember what the gospel is, 1 Corinthians, the 15th well, chapter? Heard, it's, uh, that, God, that Jesus came and uh, gave us a chance to redeem ourselves. Well, this is what it says here. You know when I preached here years ago, down here at this little church, I went in there, it took me six months to teach that church what the gospel was. They just didn't get it. I kept telling them, I said, when I'd start teaching every Wednesday night, I'd say, what is the gospel? And they said the Bible. I said, tell me what the gospel is. Tell me what the gospel is. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses have a Bible, the Muslims have a Bible. The Seventh-day Adventists have a Bible. All these people have a Bible. The Catholics have a Bible. Tell me what the gospel is. Where is it found in the Bible that tells you what the gospel is? 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. Pretty soon, after about 16 months, they start quoting this. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel. This is the gospel. Gospel means good news. And I preach to you, also which you receive, and which you also stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast, and the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Some of these talking about Jews now. He said, if you believed, he said, you come over here, and you started listening, and then you went back into Judaism. For I delivered to you as first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins. Who says Christ? Christos. Jesus. In Hebrew, it's Hamashiach, isn't it? Hamashiach. Say Hamashiach. Hamashiach. That means the anointed one. That Christ died for our sins according to what? The Bible. To the Old Testament. According to scriptures. The scriptures there is talking about is Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, etc., 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 and uh, Genesis 3.15. That he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, then to the twelve, and after that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of which are remained until... Uh, but some have died. And he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. This is after the resurrection. And last of all, as if it one uh, untimely born, one that has been aborted, he appeared unto me. For I am the least of all the apostles, of whom I am not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Paul the apostle was called Saul at that time, and he went around killing Christians. When Stephen was killed there at, at the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, 
there by that eastern gate there, and that sheep gate, he told them to throw the first stone that killed Stephen. Stephen was killed. He reacted, he rehearsed the whole history of Israel before Israel. He said God called out Abraham, he did this, etc., 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 and, uh, and that God said that he was going to send a Messiah and that we would have a king and that king would be Lord of Lord and King of Kings and in Revelation 19 chapter C and also Deuteronomy. And he said, but you crucified the Lord of glory. And then they began to, to throw rocks at him. And Paul the uh, Saul, which became Paul the Apostle, said, do it. And he held their cloaks and everything so they wouldn't get their clothes dirty with his blood. And after they, after they stoned him, what did those Jews there do to him? According to their Greek scriptures. Paul? Huh? Are you talking? Jeremy, you remember? They went up there and bit him with their teeth like dogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they bit him with their teeth like dogs. You know, the, the Jews called the Gentiles dogs, but that day they became dogs. Now let's go back now a little bit. We know what the gospel is, don't you? Don't we? And the gospel was the same gospel that God preached to, to Adam and Eve in Genesis the third chapter. He said a seed of the woman would come and he would over, overcome Satan. Now we looked and we saw that when man and woman sinned, they died. And by the way, Adam and Eve went out. What did they get and try to clothe themselves with after they sinned? You remember? Fig leaves. Fig leaves. You ever seen fig leaves before? Yeah. We had a big mission fig down there on the, uh, on the ranch down there and it finally blew it out of the ground. One of the 140, 50 mile an hour winds picked that thing up and pulled it out of the ground and threw it out there. Fig leaves are... Um, stickery. They're real stickery. They're like, almost like stinging those. Oh, boy. They, they stick you. One of the worst jobs I got as a, a little old kid out there picking fruit was picking figs. You don't want to pick figs for a living, I'll tell you that much. That's, it stuff burns your hands, will just be burning all over, you'll be burning all over. But they took fig leaves. But let me tell you something about the fig leaves. The fig leaves back then, they sewed them together and made aprons is what it said. They covered their bottom part of their body, their private areas, so to speak. But back then, there weren't any thorns on the bushes. Did you know that? Yeah. There weren't any thorns. The roses didn't have thorns on them. Mm. Nettles didn't have stinging nettles on them. And the figs did not have these little bristly things that, that bothered them because there was nothing to harm mankind. Everything in that garden blessed Adam. But, after the curse, even the fig leaves that they had put upon themselves to try to cover their sin and their wrongness became irritating to them. Now what did God do? How did He how did He clothe Adam and Eve? What did He do? How did I, what, how did God clothe Adam and Eve, Marilyn? With His uh, He clothed them with His Spirit. You no, know, with no, no, his, no, uh, no. They were clothed with His Spirit before. Yeah. They were clothed with righteousness before. Yes. But then the righteousness fell off and they and they became sinners. And they were the glory the Shekinah glory of God that clothed them before disappeared. Yes, they sinned. Yes. And they became naked, it said. Mm -hmm. Marilyn, you got a bunch of pictures in there. You got one on the television or on the uh, refrigerator in there. What do you carry and hold in there? Oh a lamb. A lamb. The skin. You love lambs. Yeah. Now lambs animals in uh, when God created animals, they were not for food. You know that Adam never ate an animal? He never ate anything. He never ate meat. Never ate an animal. All he ate was a, he was a vegetarian. And uh, in Indian, vegetarian means, what, poor hunter? Bad shot? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, they were vegetarians, but this animal they killed was an innocent animal. Type, typified Jesus Christ. All the lambs that were ever killed, and, that, and the lamb's clothing that was clothed, that animal, animal was an innocent animal. And you know that those clothes never, according to the book of Jer uh, uh, the, the Jasher, 
that those clothes lived or, or never wore out. Mm. They never wore out. That was an innocent animal with innocent blood that typified Jesus Christ. And when he clothed them, Adam and Eve, with these clothes, those clothes never wore out. When they died, they kept the clothes and they kept them and handed them down and down and down until they were lost in, in, uh, in history. Why didn't they wear out? Because those, anim those animals' lives and skins typified Jesus. But those were animals they loved that they saw die for their sins. Now, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, didn't he? As we come down to here, and his blood, <coughs> once you ask God to save your soul and forgive you of your sins, repenting of those sins, you are saved forevermore like those clothes. They never wear out. Mm -hmm. Your salvation never wears out because you're saved. Saved means what? That's a past tense word, isn't it? It's done. Either you're lost or you're saved. We have the age of conscience. God told man to uh, do good and offer blood sacrifice, typifying what this animal did. Now they've got to kill their animals themselves. God took the first animal life, kissed it to death, just kissed it into eternity. And now they have to slight, slight, slit the animal's throat and watch it die for their sins. Offer an animal sacrifice and do good. Do what's right. And they know what right was. And their failure is they were very wicked. Genesis, the sixth chapter. And the judgment was a universal flood. This is Noah's flood. Okay? Now, we know that the earth was all water, about two thirds water, and about one third earth, or approximately like that. The earth was not like it is today. I said the oldest trees in the world, and these trees up here, these Russellcomb pines, were created in eternity past, some of them. Now, a long time ago, before man was ever put on the earth. They went to the destruction of the earth when Satan destroyed the earth in, in Genesis 1 and 2. <coughs> the flood came, and all life was killed. According to Genesis, the sixth chapter, let's go back and look there for a moment and see why God destroyed the earth. Why did he destroy the earth? It said man became wicked. Now it came about that when men began to multiply on the faces of the land, and daughters were born to them, they had pretty girls. Pretty girls. You got a pretty daughter, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty girls. <laughs> now these pretty girls, uh, and Marilyn was a pretty girl, Sharon was a pretty girl, Pretty girls. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. Now, who are the sons of God here? Who are the sons of God? They are angels. They are angels. In the book of Job, it talks about in the first chapter... I can find it. Job chapter 1. And it talks about a man by the name of Job. And he land, lived in the land of us. By the way, the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. That's the oldest one. That's before, older than Genesis. Because Genesis was written by Moses later. It tells about their earliest periods of time in the Bible. But the book of Job was the first written book in the Bible. And uh, it tells about how good a man that Job was. And it says, uh, Now there was a day when the sons of God came in to present themselves before the Lord. The sons of God are who? Angels. Okay, Bene Ha Elohim. Bene Ha Elohim. Say that. Bene Ha Elohim. Bene means sons. And what does that mean? Bene. 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 It means according to a pattern. Oh, okay. You know that angels are very powerful beings, aren't they? They're supernatural, aren't they? And Bene Ha Elohim, the sons of God, 
these sons of God, these creations of God, are angels. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, is an angel very powerful? Can it go through all the dimensions? Yes. Like God does. Yes. So the angels were made in somewhat the image of God also. And that's why they're called sons of God. Mm -hmm. Now, they're supernatural because they don't die. They don't die. Once they were created, they're not eternal. Satan is not eternal with God. If you will study some uh, theological sources, uh, they'll say that there's always been bad or evil and good. Now, by the way, evil is not a true entity. Evil is an act of angels or mankind. It is an act. It is a, it is a mental state that becomes an act that becomes a action. That we can see evil. We can see evil, you turn on the television. You want to see evil? Turn on the television. Right over here, a couple of nights ago, they had a, a, an outlaw running from the law. And he wasn't going to stop. Finally, they got him roadblocked, and he pulled, came out of his car shooting. And when somebody comes out of the car shooting, you better think real fast, and you better shoot back, or you're going to get killed. Well, he ended up dying. He got killed. Now, that man was evil. Why was he evil? Because he did evil acts. He did evil things. Mm -hmm. He became evil because of volition, because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to do that. And so there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and among these were Satan. Now the word Satan there is uh, it's not what God, God didn't create Satan. Did you know that? He didn't create, he created Lucifer or Haleo, which means the light carrier or the glorious one. And he became evil because he thought evil and then he acted evil and he became evil. Now, in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, it tells, this is the double prophecy, by the way. It talks about a man, the king of Tyre, but some of the things in this prophecy do not pertain to him at all. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up the lamentations over the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, You have the seal of perfection. He's talking about Satan here. He's talking about Lucifer, Hadil. You have the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. How many Edens are there in the Bible? Eden? Edens. How many Edens are there in the Bible? How many Edens are there in the Bible? I don't know what an Eden is. Two. One Eden was created in eternity past. And Eden is also... Sharon, do you remember what Eden means? It means like a throne room. Delicacies. It means royalty. Alright? In the first Eden, that was the throne room of Lucifer. Hylia. Okay? Now, when he repels, he gets a dozen name, and that name is Satan, which means one who opposes. Okay? You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Now, by the way, <laughs> by the way, Muhammad describes a being that came to him and took him to heaven and transported him. This is the Barak. Barak is what they call it. Barak. And this Barak that he explained is exactly the description here of Satan. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, and the lapis, and the lazula, and the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold, and the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you on the day that you were created. You were perfect. God does not create evil. He's not capable of creating evil. But he created him with a volition. 
a free choice, you might say. You were the anointed one. The anointed one, the picked out one, the chosen one, to over the material creation of God was Lucifer, Halil. You were the anointed one, the cherub who covers. The Bible calls him a cherub. So he was in the order of angels called the cherub. The one who covers. And I placed you there. You were in the holy government of God, the holy mountain of God. You walked amidst the stones of fire. The, the throne room of God. And you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until evil, unrighteousness, arun, was found in you. By the abundance of your trade and by you were internally filled with violence, you sinned, and then I have cast you as profane away from the mountain of God. Oh, covering great Satan from the midst of the stones of fire. But back over here in the book of Job, it tells that he'd walked in there and that he began to converse with God. Lucifer did, or Satan actually at that time. He said that he uh, conversed with God. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Then Satan said to the Lord, From roaming about the earth. Is he still roaming about the earth today? Yes. Oh boy, you better believe it. Just look over toward the Middle East, the, the cradle of humanity, which will be the burial ground of humanity. Walking around, and the Lord said uh, to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away. And Satan answered, the Lord says, uh, Does Job fear God for nothing? The only th reason why he fears you and likes you because you're so good to him. And then he begins to uh, ask God, Let me tempt Job. Let me try Job. And I'll show you that he doesn't love you. Job had a wife, didn't he? He had a bunch of children. Satan killed all of his kids. Satan killed all of his cattle. And had some of them captured by these evil people. And finally, Job's wife, Job was struck with boils, probably uh, what we call staph infection. And he was sitting out there just crying and praying to the Lord, throwing ashes on his head, on his body. By the way, ashes are, ashes have in them a antiseptic, don't they? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what we call lye. Uh, lye soap was made out of ashes. Mm -hmm. So he's showing ashes on him, trying to help himself to get better. And his wife walks out and looks at Job. You old rascal, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job says, how can I do that? He said, rain, he said, harvest, and now devastation. I came into this world naked, and I shall go out of this world naked. It doesn't matter. Then we find out later on, his friends came around him and they were cursing him and said, you've been bad, Job. you're really bad, you're really bad, you're a terrible sinner, you're a terrible sinner. All of his friends said, you're a horrible guy, just why don't you repent? And he says, I've done nothing. I've done nothing. And finally God heals Job, gets rid of that woman and gives him another woman, it's more worthy of him. And he has more kids. And he's more glorified than ever. And he tells his friends, I speak to you. You let Job pray for you because you're sinners. Well, that happened back at that time. So we know Satan is real. He's not a figment of imagination. He's not just something evil. He's not good against evil. But he does exist and he fools around with mankind today. God founded human government after the flood. And he killed all of these, uh, these wicked ones in, in Genesis 6 chapter. It says the Nephilim roamed on the earth at that time. The Nephilim roamed on the earth at that time. And they took the daughters of men. That's women. And they brought forth the Nephilim. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. 
Now, men chose husbands for their wives. Did you know that? Men chose husbands for their daughters, that is. Men chose husbands for their daughters, <clears throat> but these angels just took up what they wanted. They took what they wanted. And the Lord said, My spirit will not strive with man forever because he is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. And that's not how long you're going to live. A lot of people misinterpret that scripture. His days shall be 120 years. Now from the time that God talks to Noah till the ark is finished and the flood comes is 120 years. Mm -hmm. People were living seven, eight, nine hundred years at this time. Then the Nephilim were on the earth, became on the earth at then those days also afterwards. The sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, and they were mighty men of old. It said they were giants. They were terrors, terrors of old. Men of terror. Now, when I saw that Bigfoot out here in 1985 or so, I was just blown away in my mind because I didn't have any room in there for this this what we call missing link, as they call it. But as I studied from the Bible, and as I was interviewed by the Bigfoot research and all that stuff, they saw that your well, your not your Bigfoot sighting was very valid. You didn't believe in them, first of all, and you were a woodsman, a, a forester, what do you want to call a mountain man, <laughs> a wild Indian. And you know what animals look like. And I think that's what this was. It says they were before the flood, and God killed all of the Nephilim and everything on the earth and all the mammals. Now, if you read the book of Enoch, you'll find out that these angels were not only cohabiting with women and bringing forth these giants, and these, by the way, these people were killing other people and eating them and drinking mm -hmm. their blood. If you want to read the, the very old original vampire stories, you read about these Nephilim mm. in the book of Enoch. And they were killing animals. They were depopulating the world. Men of terror. And Saul saw their, their were wickedness. And it was great upon the earth. And the intent and the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Remember, evil is not an isolated entity. Evil is an action that comes from volition. And the Lord became very sorry, and he grieved his heart when he looked at the earth. He said, I'll blot out man from the earth. And then he tells Noah, build an ark. Now, I don't know how long it took for Noah to build an ark, but somewhere between the time that God said, I'm going to bring the earth, I'm going to bring the flood to the earth, and until the time that the flood came, Noah built that ark. Whether it was 75 years or 100 years or whatever it was, he built that ark. And that ark was 450 feet long, etc., etc. It was a, a football length and a half long. And it had stories in it. And all it was was a big box. And then who called the animals into the ark? We have, a, we have Noah in the movies leading the animals in the ark, but the Bible says that God called the animals into the ark. Mm -hmm. And every one of those animals had to be pure, not part Nephilim. Because if you look at the Greek mythology and you see these half, half man and, and half horse and half goat and all that, you've seen these old features. Now, the book of Enoch tells you that those were real back then. So all those creatures were killed on the earth, and the earth started over again with that Noah's three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the Caucasoid, the Negroid, and the Mongoloid lines. That's where they came from right there. That's what we have today. There's where we are up to date. We've had a flood, and then out of that flood, he established government, he told them to scatter and multiply, and that's where we have, have you heard of Nimrod? And the Tower of Babel. He built that there, and that's when God divided the earth. He divided the earth, and he confused the languages. The earth spoke one language before that. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson, message. Father, thank you for your word. 
And uh, we, as we send it out into the world, we ask you to use it to bring people to you, to help them understand your word. And please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name.